I'm not asking for your money. I'm not asking for you guys to spend hours. It takes you literally 10 seconds. Like, comment, and subscribe, guys. Please, it means so much to me. Thank you so much. Guys, welcome back to part two of the Modine interview. Um, part one done really, really well. Thank you so much for everyone who liked, comment, subscribed, who enjoyed it. Walla walla, it means so much. It makes it worthwhile. <laughs> but to everyone who made these stupid comments, who accused me of disrespecting Modine, of belittling Modine, at laughing at him at, at his expense or making fun of somebody who has mental health issues. Okay, let me address these, this, these stupid comments. I'm Halu Aziz. I've been raised correctly and I will never ever, under any circumstance, make fun of another human being. Make fun of a grown man. Now you say I disrespect him and you say that I disrespected a man with mental health issues. How can you claim that someone has mental health issues without ever actually meeting him off social media, off camera. I have met him off camera for a long period of time. And I can assure you that I have not seen or witnessed any mental health issues. Now, maybe he might have, maybe he might have. But from what I have seen or, without, or what I've experienced with him, I don't see nothing. That's one. Two, I find Modine funny. When I watch him on live, I laugh. When I'm with him, I laugh. Sometimes when I ask him a question and he replies to me in a serious matter, the way he replies to me, I find it funny. I'm not gonna sit here and be like, wait, don't laugh because people watching might think that I'm laughing at him or that I find it funny or I'm making fun of him. No. Sorry, bro, okay. I wanna make it very clear that in the first interview, I never disrespected him. I never violated him. And if it came across like that, that's your opinion and that's your interpretation. That's it, that's period. Hello Aziz will never disrespect nobody. Anyways, part one done well. Guys, if you enjoyed part two, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And here goes. We talked so much here and then none of it was recorded. That's crazy. No, I know, bro. That's what I say. They don't see what? what we talk about off camera, do you know what I mean? The mad things we talk about off camera is more, <laughs> more madness than what you see on camera. Yeah. Mo, so like, since we last spoke, uh, since we last spoke, how's it going finding a wife in that? Bro, I'll be honest with you, <laughs> I get a bit of pressure, yeah, from the fam or and that. Like, oh, seriously? Yeah. Oh, your, uh, you, your dean is half completed. You understand? Your, why, why have you not got a wife? Why have you, listen, I'm like, what do you mean? It's not a button I can press, yeah, to, that I can get a wife in it. Because you know what, yeah? There's people out there that have got the opportunity to get married, didn't it? Yeah. And they're not getting married. So they're the ones that's cursed and not from... Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, um, whoever is able to get married... Should get married. Uh, but he does not, he is not from us. Or something like that. Like, mm. But what do you think, what do you think stopping Modin? What do you think is stopping you from bro, getting married? Like, bro, first of all, yeah. We, uh, first of all, as in the Quran says, it's upon the communities to help the people because in Arabic it says Wankahu al Ayama Minkum was Salheen. It says get the people married who are single and good, you understand? The Quran is this is the community's job. This is the people's job, the families, all of that, yeah. That's why they say the the the, the job of the father is three things. The hadith says from the Prophet. The job of the father to his son is three things. He gives him a good name, he teaches him the Quran, and he gets him married. You understand? That's the father's job. I told my dad when I was 15, listen, I don't want to bash. I don't want to do that. I didn't tell him I don't want to bash. I was too shy. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, when you're 14, 15, you see your teachers and that, you go home, you, do, you understand? You go mad, didn't it? So That's I'm so thinking easy. to my dad, listen, I want to G, I want to marry when I was 15. Yeah. He's like, like I said, he's like, you know what I'm saying? Get out of here. But like I said, bro, getting married is the best thing. Well, let me tell you why. I can agree to that. Yeah. The, it gives you lots of money. It gives you happiness. It gives you health. Um, Gives you baraka. Yeah, baraka. You, you, each time, the, each drop I've heard, yeah, each drop, like when you do ghusl, after you've done your thing with your wife, and then you have to wash, innit? 
you have to shower on it every time in it so after you do the shower each drop that falls from your body to the floor i've read in a hadith that in al kafi i think it says you get a palace in heaven for each drop that falls on the floor from the ghusl after you've done halal intercourse with your wife with your so it's such a big blessing man. and like i said but like i said look well someone like andrew tate yeah yeah this guy is i think he's been sent by god the guy is not normal, bro. The guy is literally changed the world, bro. He, th this guy is either going to get assassinated. Oh. Yeah, I swear it's not a joke, bro. You, if you're going to see on the news, Andrew Tate gone. <laughs> but they can't get rid of him because his videos are everywhere, innit? Yeah. So even if they do try kill him, bro. Because yeah. he's gone against what this new thing that, that's going on. With new like agenda. Bro. Yeah, so he's gone. He's, fin he's, he's destroyed it. Do you see what I'm saying? I'm thinking this guy's sent by God, bro. It's mad. Yeah, but Mo, if I'm yeah. being honest, yeah, yeah. And don't get upset by, by me asking this question or me saying yeah. this, yeah. You see, like in today's day and age, bro, the woman expects a lot from the man. Like, bro, like but, I said, but, but, but I'm saying, like, yeah. do you feel like you can provide that for a woman, though? Bro, listen, like I said, it's an Andrew Tate thing, yeah. But like I said, always Andrew Tate is the answer, isn't it? <laughs> But like I said, uh, he's the, he's, he, this guy's the teacher, innit? But we're just the young Jesus of Andrew T, innit? Yeah. So I say, look, yeah, in this country, fam, look, if you go to any country around the world, yeah. you can get married like that, bro. Yeah. Why? Because your British pound is strong. So you can go to any country you want with your British passport, yeah. you can have 55,000 wives. If you got the power for that, innit? But yeah. none of you got that, innit? Only in heaven you have that, innit? Yeah. But like I said, when you're in the UK, yeah, the women they want to colonize, innit? They get that, they understand? They want to be the man, innit? And that's the problem because the first person to get kicked out of it, the reason why Adam, Prophet Adam, got kicked out of heaven is because he listened to his wife. His wife told him to. <laughs> so the first person to listen to his wife was Adam, and then he regretted it. So that man has to be the man, innit? Obviously, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. they want money, but they've got more money. Look, once a woman's got more money, yeah. she's going to be independent. So a woman's going to say, listen, I've got my toy, I've got my money, I don't need the man, I can go to the sperm bank. But that's not my point, that's not yeah. my point. So I'm saying, okay, let's say tomorrow you get married. Yeah. Yeah, a woman would want you to provide for the, provide yeah. for her. Yeah. Maybe she wants to live in a, maybe a bigger home. Yeah. Or maybe she wants to go on holiday, maybe she wants to go eat at a nice restaurant yeah like do you modine think that if you was to get married tomorrow you could provide what a woman wants in today's day and age let's be honest bro they, they all want that what does the quran say the quran says he says even uh, allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says even if they are poor poor as in they got nothing yeah. and they get married allah will make them rich poor as in they got nothing and they get married allah will make them rich so if anyone is out there thinking I'm not going to get married because I'm going to become poor, this person he has he has got a bad bad belief system. So he's basically he's messed up. You understand? His his, his whole belief system is wrong. His, his Islam is messed up. You understand? You have to believe that Allah is going to provide for you. That Allah will make it happen. It make it everything easy. But like I said, bro, we say that things are written, innit? But you have to try and do half. Allah does the other half, innit? You can't just sit down. So you got to try, bro. They say the, the person, listen to this hadith from Al in Al Kafi. It says a person, a Muslim, who gets two Muslim people married. So if I come, I say, listen, there's this, I try to get two people married. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses this person and they get married. So he gets two Muslims married. Yeah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses this person in heaven with 1,000 wives of the Hur al Ain. The ones that have beautiful eyes, very dark uh, black pupils yeah. and um, amazing eyes. They're the most beautiful woman you'll ever see. He gives him 1,000 wives just for getting two Muslims married. So, so if I get you married, <laughs> yeah. wait, no, no, wait, wait. Yeah. so you're telling me right now. It's a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Okay, so you're telling me like Modine, you're telling me that if I get you married, that yeah. Allah will give me a thousand wives. Yeah, gender. yeah, of course, bro. Any Muslim, not just me, any Muslim. You understand? So, so like I said, helping or do like I, that's why I'm so jealous of Muslims or someone like that or Muslim marriage, whatever. You know them people. I'm so jealous. I'm like, Ya Allah, what? Imagine the rewards they're getting, bro. They got like hundred thousand people married. 
Why don't you try a Muslim match? Why don't you try a Muslim match? On the Islamic? Holy Quran, after today, I'm going to I'm gonna try one. On the Holy Quran. Yeah, but have you ever tried these Islamic dating sites? Or like yeah, I've tried match? Muslim match. So how did it go? Bro, it's so dead for me, fam. But Why? my brethren, my good friend, he's like a bit younger than me. He got married with an English girl, uh, Riva, yeah. mashallah. And he's got a little boy now, mashallah, from Muslim. Match. So why is it not working for you then? No, like I said, not everything works for everyone, but like I said, it works for a lot of people and this guy is going to be so blessed when he like, you understand? Mm. So he's so lucky. I wish I can get that reward, didn't it? Mm. That's my dream to get so much reward like that. To help with, look, look at his, his, when, he, when he's in his grave or when he's in heaven, he's going to be relaxed, bro. <laughs> he got like 100,000 people married or more or less, I don't know. And all of these uh, apps, Muslim apps, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh, it is Bishop's Avenue. Jeez. Wow, I used to come here when, like, when, uh, when I was a little kid, yeah, my friend used to have a mansion here. When I was like, Seriously? yeah, uh, 10, uh, 9, 10, 8, mansion? 9, 10, yeah. Why was his parents do? His parents were, so his grandpa was rich. He used to have a mansion, swimming pool, badminton. Right here, bro. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm here. Wow. Bishop's um, Avenue. I, I, that's what I thought. What? This must be Bishop's Avenue. This is the, this is the poshest area, bro. Yeah, no, no, Look at the houses, bro. Very expensive, bro. Wow. Oh, you know that the guy had a massive garden, basketball, badminton, swimming pool. It was massive, bro. You don't talk to son anymore? No, I do, do that sometimes. Alhamdulillah. But look at this, bro. Wow, wow. This is mad. They say the happiness of a believer is having a big house and a good wife and uh, a fast car or something like that. Now, Mo, before I ask this question, I want to apologize because this question sorry because because this question if someone wants to ask me i'll find it very disrespectful yeah yeah now a few people as you know when we've done the interview in part one they said that i'm disrespecting somebody that's got mental health issues that's not mentally all there yeah one second one second, one second. <laughs> now i have met you nah, off, no, no, off no, live no, I've, no. I've i've met you off social media yeah and i've met you in person and i spent a long time with you yeah. And I can really, honestly, wallahi say that I have never seen any signs of mental health. I've never seen any signs of any mental issues. Yeah. Can you please, for them people who apparently say, I disrespect somebody with mental health. And, and can you please say something to them people who claim you have mental health issues? Can you please <laughs> tell them if you do, if you don't? La hawla. Please. La hawla, la quwwata, la billah. Listen. Well, let me tell you, I don't want to cuss these people and say, oh, obviously, when someone cusses, you got to cuss them back in it. But I'm going to allow you lot for this one, yeah? Listen, someone saw, in the time of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa the companions, they saw someone that's, you know, them braids that you see them on road, they're mad and that, yeah? Like, he's doing mad things and that. So they said, look at this majnoon, look at this crazy guy. They told the Prophet, look at him. The Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa said, this guy is not crazy or nothing he's mubtala Allah has put a test on him he's like he's been affected like from that test do you know who's the you know, the mental do you know who's the mental prayer is the one that sins he open like he does his sins to Allah he violates do you understand he violates the deen he violates he openly sins stuff like that but yeah. this is the prayer that's that's mental that's that's mental regarding people saying mental or not yeah Mental health look, issues. Look, there's a there's people out there who've got PhD. Listen, the people that said that about me, I'm not gonna cuss you lot. I wanna I feel like cussing you lot so bad, yeah. But I'm gonna allow you lot just this time, yeah. It's for someone saying man's mental. That's a violation, you know. But anyway, well, 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 it's so that's a big violation. But listen to this, no, because they they I'm not gonna lie, they probably see that in themselves, so then they're trying to put it on other people. But like I said, yeah, there's people out there, yeah. There's people out there that I've got a PhD on the highest degree level of intellectual, intellectual whatever. But then he'll pick up a toy from um, Toys R Us and he'll put it down and worship it. There's people like that. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> so he's got the highest level degree. That's fine. He'll pick up a toy from the, and he'll say, this is, this is God. This is his God. And he'll start bowing down to it. And I can show you people like that. You understand? Like I said, yeah, Alhamdulillah, and all the great people, like, listen, like I said, yeah, we 
I got a lot of ops in it. I got a lot of enemies, whoever. I got I, I probably got the most enemies online, innit? And on road and all that. Because when you speak the truth here, yeah, the truth's got a lot of enemies, innit? Yeah. The truth they don't like to hear the truth. They don't like do you understand? And uh, but like I said, yeah, I'm fair in it. I'm fair guy. I'm not gonna like uh I'm not gonna like I said, you shouldn't in the end of the time someone cusses you, it's better to leave them, bruv. Don't yeah. don't even uh, reply to them. But of course, yeah, this yeah. is like your own personal records, yeah. This is like your own medical history. It's 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 nobody's business. But like they may say that because sometimes they see you on live and you do some funny things on live and you oh, try Mr. to... Mr. Bean does funny things. Does that mean Mr. Bean's... Uh, That's so true. Mr. Bean's uh, mental, bruv. Mr. Bean's got the one of the smartest people. If you know who knows Mr. Bean, who is Mr. Bean is. Yeah? <laughs> so, Mr. Bean, he's one of the smartest brains, bruv. I'm not trying to say, like, I'm Mr. Bean or nothing, yeah? Yeah, but I know, yeah, I know. But, look, we have... Look, sometimes you joke, but when you joke, say the truth, bruv. Don't lie and joke, bro. Because when you lie, one lie, 70,000 angels can curse you, fam. Yeah. And you shouldn't backbite people as well. You trolling me, man. You backbited me. I'm taking all your good deeds. That's it. That's it. And you can take my bad deeds. Man's Muslim and can so, backbite me. So I would appreciate, please. No, let them back. Well, let them take my good. Let no, them, no, no, let no, them no, take no, my no. bad deeds. Yeah, 100%. And I'll take your good deeds. Keep on doing it. Day of judgment, we'll but see you in it. I would appreciate if everyone. Uh, in the in the first interview who claimed that Modin has mental health issues and all this rubbish could you please apologize now let them on the day of apologize. judgment i'll get them on the day of judgment don't worry the time will come when i'll get you don't worry keep doing what you're doing and see what happens in the day of judgment so Modin, has to be allowed so Modin, yeah. just very quickly yes or no do you honestly no suffer any no <laughs> They say the person, there's a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. It says the person that sleeps alone will be hit with, will become majnoon. He will become mental. So I just wanted to say for all the people living alone, and it says this, the reason why Imam Sadiq said this, he said because the most time shaitan will be powerful over you is when you're alone. So ask all the people that live alone. What they get up to when they're in their rooms and that, and it's harder for them. They start becoming majnoon. And I'm not gonna lie, bro. Living alone is the worst thing. Try not to live alone, fam. But like, uh, don't you live alone? Boy, that's the thing, yeah. I'll be honest with me. I get home, yeah, for like just sometimes for fajr, sleep, wake up. I'm out, so I'm hardly home. I just go there, pray, sleep. But I'm that, out. I'm not home. Like I'm not even. I'm always out. But but is that why? Is that why you're literally never home? Is not, that why you're always out? Because like you don't want to be at home by yourself. Oh, yeah, would never would be at home alone. That you go mad, bro. I hate staying alone. You have to be with people, bro. <laughs>
This man used to be a wise man. A lot, you could read about him, Lokman, yeah? So when the angel of death came to take his life, he saw Lokman's uh, house and he said, look at your house. Like, like he laughed at his house because it was made from like papyrus, whatever. It was like a very simple house. So, and then Lokman said to the angel of death, even this house is too much because I'm going to leave it. You understand? What I'm trying to say is that, uh, you see that like, I'm not, no, nothing. Every, there's one thing that's promised, that's death. And it can come anytime. So for me to think, yeah, I'm going to live long, yeah, that's a stupid thinking because I can, you've seen what's happened to you. The angel of death will take your life so quick. It's not like you won't even have, like it could just happen. So once people, like for me, if I got money now, yeah, and it's, I'm thinking to myself, am I going to get enough time to spend this money? I'll be honest with you, though. Yeah. If I got like five grand or six grand, 6,000 pounds, yeah, I'll be nervous, isn't it? Because I'm thinking, am I gonna live to spend this six thousand pounds? That's I'm thinking. I'm not gonna. I'm thinking to myself, I might not enjoy this six thousand pounds. Do you understand? Anything can happen. Do you understand? Anything can happen. War right now can happen. That six thousand pound could be nothing. Tomorrow you're gonna. The bread is gonna be worth six thousand pounds. Do you understand? Yeah. Tomorrow water. There might be a war for water. All of this is that is not gonna be nothing. That's why the crypto thing crashed. Because when the war happened, people are yeah. thinking bread, fuel. Uh, what was crypto? Bang, it's finished. It's yeah. nothing. It's worth it. People lost 10 million, 5 million, 4 million. I know people got KSI 7 million. Do you understand? So anything can happen, bro. Tomorrow there could be a catastrophe. So all these people that's living, and uh, and uh, especially like I'm saying, the, the generation before us, the ones that are not really on their deen too much, all they worry about is degree, mortgage, even though interest is haram when you're paying interest and taking interest. Like, People say, like, I don't know a lot, of, a lot of people try and find loopholes with this interest thing because the hadith about interest is one dirham or one pound, whatever interest is worse. This is what I've read in Al Kafi from Mama Sadiq. Taking or giving interest with one pound is worth is worse than having fornication on top of the Kaaba with one of your family members. Wow. On the Holy Quran, this is what I read. And, and, and forget that, that's nothing. In the Quran, it says, the one that wages war with Allah and his messenger. Yeah. So, like I said, there's people mortgage, even in French, what does mortgage mean? Sign till you're dead or sign debt till you're dead. Yeah, yeah. It's a mad meaning. Yeah, it's, it's a French word, isn't it? So you're going to be like, what's going to happen? But how does somebody in today's day and age, where they're so fixated on like buying that house or buying that car or getting married and having kids, how does somebody like have that mindset of living the day as they won't make the night and living the night as they won't make the day because this is something that the prophet uh, muhammad yeah. says uh, I, I remember the hadith of the prophet sallallahu when he told one of the sahaba he told salman he said what is your hope in this world he said uh salman or abu dhar one of those sahabas Allah he said to them what is uh, what is your hope in this world or amal and then, the, and then one of them said, I will wake up, I don't know if I'll make it till the night. And, one of, and I wake and I, wake, I go to sleep, I don't know if I'll make it to the day. Yeah, so the Prophet Sallallahu he said, uh, when they said to him, oh, the Sahaba said to him, we don't know if we're gonna make it from night to day or from day to night. The Prophet Sallallahu said, that's too long. Your amal, your hope is too long in this dunya. You've done a long thing, like not making it to night. Then they said, what do you mean, oh, oh Prophet? Oh, Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, when I close my eyes like that and I open them, blink, I don't know if I'm gonna open them. Do you understand? So if I, I don't know when I close them, am I gonna open them? So basically you can die in a big of a any second, split second, bro. I've lost I've seen young G's getting M off, bro. They would never in a million years think they'll get M off at 21 or 19 or 23 or then stand. When they're in the peak of their youths and that. Any second, bro, you don't know what can happen, brother. And everything's gone. That's why I know of people they got money and they didn't spend it. And then what's gonna happen? In the day of you're on a grave, you're gonna be punished. Why did you store hold this wealth? Why didn't you give it? Why didn't you spend it? At least spend it. Enjoy it. You understand? The people don't wanna spend it, they wanna save, save, save. And you don't know, like like I said, this dunya is is um, like the more good you do, the more good will come back to you. Even there's a hadith that says, do business with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by giving charity. 
So the more charity you get, the more money you're gonna get. You understand? So it's and that's what I'm saying. It's like people like I don't know what to say, bro. It's mad. This dunya is mad, bro. Now there's one thing I love about Modine, yeah? And sorry, the audio might not be so clear. Modine is the one person that I've seen on a consistent basis talk about Yemen, talk about the Muslims in China, just talk about all injustice, talk about that Billy guy in, in, what, in uh, was it Saudi or Dubai, where is it? Oh, Billy in Dubai. Yeah, Modine is the one person, yeah, that I've seen talk about non-stop doesn't care about what anybody thinks the muslims who get slaughtered and bombed every day and this video here yeah made me like actually respect modine a lot here it is yeah these buddhas the saudis do you know why because they don't even say oh buddha why are you doing this you know what saudi do fuck the saudi scum piece of yes. shit pigs okay, you know what they do you know <laughs> what they do? Let me tell you why. Instead of helping the Muslims in Burma, you know what they do? They, they, they get 100,000 pounds of tons of bombs and they billions of pounds and they drop it on the innocent poor country in Thank yeah? you. Okay, like, fuck Saudi. Fuck Saudi scum piece fuck of shit. Saudi. Fucking the biggest pagans ever. They fucked up Yemen. Yemen is got what? 10 million. Ten, sorry, sorry for swearing. But Allah says, Allah does not like people shouting and swearing unless they've been oppressed. This is in the Quran, go and read it. Yemen right now, 100, 110 million children are gonna die. This is the United Nations saying it. Why is the world silent? Why? Where is the humanitarian people? Where is the Muslims? So-called Muslims who believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if you see injustice, talk out against it. Do not stay silent. Where are the Muslims today? Where are they? I want to see them right now. I want to see Ali Dawah, Hamid Hijab, every single Shamsi. I want to see all of them come here and condemn what Saudi's doing in, in, the, in the Yemen. Ahl al-Yemen, they are being killed. Children, wallahi, last week a bus full of 100 children was shot down and killed. For three years, four years they've been getting bombed. Why is the world silent? Why is there hypocrisy in Muslims? Come on, and you're blaming Tan and you're blaming everyone. Why don't you blame yourself and your leaders who are killing innocent children in Yemen? What kind of Islam is this? Wallahi, you are far away from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to stand up for every oppressed person, everyone around the world whether they're Muslim or not. So why is the Muslims being fake? Why? Come on, bring me one man who's talked out. Bring me, you, I'll tell you who spoke out. You know the guy who played Incredible Hulk on Instagram? He's a Latino guy, he spoke out. And he's not even Muslim. He spoke out against the injustice of Yemen. The guy who plays Incredible Hulk, I don't forgot his name. Him, check him out. There are good people out there, whether they're Christian or non-Muslim, there are good people. And they're the evilest people in the Muslims, wallahi. Allah, Allah, please help my brothers around the world. Please help all the oppressed people, whether they're Muslim or not. We stand with them. So, in case anybody says, yeah, Mo Dean's not saying he's Shia or he's saying, well, one Muslim, whatever. Now, in 2022, because it's blown up, he's, he's on TikTok, he's too scared. This video is from 2018, yeah? August 19th, 2018, yeah? Listen to the words he says very carefully. That's, that's what I'm saying. I don't care whether you're Shi'i, Sunni, Salafi, Wahhabi. I don't care. Muslim. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That's it. Everyone who's Muslim is my brother. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. Forget this Shi'i, Sunni, Salafi, Wahhabi, Madh, Haram. La tafarruqu. Wa'tasamu bihabdillah jami'a. Wa la tafarruqu. Al Muslimin wahid, wahid, one. Islam is one. We should unite upon Ya Allah and Allah Muhammad Rasulullah. And the Haumatikum Ummata Wahide. Why is everyone fighting, killing each other? Why? Shaitan is in the, in the, in the in killing, making Muslims kill each other. Why? Fear Allah, Yom Al Qiyamah. Fear Allah. All the people. I love Saudi people. I love uh, all the Arabs. But the government, but the government, the government, what they're doing in Yemen is wrong. What are they doing to the Muslim brothers in Yemen? Can you please? now address like why why are you so passionate about what's happening in yemen first of all yeah yemen yeah it's like the the hadiths we have about the people of yemen yeah, from the holy prophet 
There's so many. Like, I'll give you a few. The people of wisdom is Yemen. The people of Iman is Yemen. Whoever hurts the people of Yemen has hurt me. He just prayed, like, loved them so much and told people, Muslims to look after them. And a lot of the Sahabas that was from Yemen, you understand, the great Sahabas and that. Yeah. So basically, we've been told by the, the Hadiths, by the Prophet, for the sake of Allah, innit? We love them, innit? So anyone that's hurting them is like, like the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, anyone hurts them is like he hurt me. Do you understand? Yeah. Okay, so Mo, uh, can you explain to me where we are and what is this? And why is everyone in black? Basically, today's Ashura is the 10th day of Muharram where Imam Hussain السلام, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad was uh, slaughtered with 70 of his family members 70 of the Prophet Muhammad's grandchildren and out of the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we, um, we are sad so yeah, every year yeah, yeah. we are sad on this day you understand? Yeah. and um, yeah so that's why we're here just to remember just from the love of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we come here to show okay. we are sad okay now you said to me earlier but yeah. But you're not Shia, that you're Muslim, right? Yeah. But this is like a Shia event. This is like a, like a, Let me like explain. A Shia celebration. Imam Hussein is not for Shia. He's for the whole world. Yeah. And he's especially for the Muslims as well. You understand? So all of this art Imam Hussein is only for the Shia thing. That's uh, not true. And uh, for, for example, if I go to like a Husseiniyah, what they call it, because it's like there's mosque and there's Husseiniyah, like a place where they remember Imam Hussein and they pray there as well. The other day, I, like, I stopped some two people from beefing, like, I, I stopped bloodshed from happening. And then the owners of the mosque, the, like the Husseiniyah place, they said, oh, you're not allowed in. Because I stopped it. Yeah, and they're meant yeah, to be Shia, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not following Imam Hussein, do you understand? Doesn't mean everyone who calls himself Shia is following but, Imam Hussein, do you understand? What I'm trying to say yeah. is that I'm, I'm, being I'm, I'm helping people, I'm stopping someone from getting hurt. And then they're oppressing me. They tell me you're not allowed to come into the mosque, for example. Yeah. So Imam Hussain is for all the good people in the world, whether they're Shia, Sunni, saying, Muslim, saying, Christians, I understand? Know. I hear what you're saying, but you're saying you're not Shia, yeah. but there's no one Sunni here, everyone here is Shia, no? No, there is, but if you could look around, you'll find Sunni, there, might, there will be Sunni people. And there will be also, like, like I said, Imam Hussain is the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad. If you love the Prophet Muhammad, you have to love his grandson, like, do you understand? Because like I said, I'm a, uh, it's not just for Shia. So people say it's just for Shia. Even Shamsi, he said, Lanatullah on the killings of Imam Hussein. And I, I respected him for that. I said, I respect him for that. When I saw him, he got 3 million views on that video. And we cursed the, the killings of Imam Hussein. And that's even Shamsi, who's uh, on the Wahhabi school, he would say that. So for all normal Muslims, they have to, you know what I'm saying? And as you can see, there's like thousands of people here today. So cool. To okay, cool. Um, last question, yeah? yeah. Uh, you told me that they're going to walk from here, Marble Lodge, to Holland Park, right? Yeah. And as they walk, they uh, slap their chest. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. That's what you told me, right? Yeah, like uh, some people, they do like that. Some people... But can you explain yeah. why they slap their chest? What's the reason uh, they slap their chest? Slap, basically, that's just like a tradition, isn't it? It's nothing to do with black. Like, it's not a part of the yeah, religion, yeah. you understand? Yeah. Yeah. It's just like to show, our, yeah. to show that we're sad, you know? Because it was the biggest massacre. It's even mentioned in the Bible. The biggest, uh, the biggest um, uh, massacre to get closeness to God. I forgot what it's called. It will be in the Euphrates River. So it's like he got chopped up so badly. If you knew what happened, the story, you're gonna like, you're gonna burst out of tears. You're gonna be so crying. You're gonna be so. You understand? It's so sad. Like, so just to show, like, we're sad. You know, we, we do that. Like, you understand? Okay, so Mo, um, I want you to explain to me, yeah, if this is like something where you say is like the biggest massacre or something so important, yeah, why isn't, why isn't it like all the Muslims, why isn't it like the whole Ummah doing it, do you know what I mean? Why is it like mainly the Shia community doing it, you know what I mean? Yeah, okay, basically, um, Imam Hussain, obviously some people, they love Ahl al-Bayt. You have to love Ahl al-Bayt. In, in your salah every day, you say, Allah, salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Uh, if you don't say, your salah is not accepted. The Quran says about Ahl al-Bayt. So a lot of Muslims today, they, they've forgotten like the, the will of the Prophet Muhammad when, when he said, I leave with you two things, the Quran and my Ahl al-Bayt. 
all the Sunni books, even if you ask all the, um, the Sunni scholars, they will say all the Sunni books say Quran and Ahlul Bayt. Except for one person, Malik, is, uh, he said Quran and Sunnah. So all the Sunnah books are telling the Muslims to love Ahlul Bayt and, and, and take the Sunnah from them. You understand? And uh, of course, after the massacre of Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, there was like a lot of regimes, also like the Abbasi regime. After that, they became, you understand? And the family of the Prophet Muhammad was uh, persecuted a lot, you understand? So a lot of people in history, they try and like hide this massacre because they don't want the crimes to be exposed. So then they don't want to talk about this because if they talk about this, they will be exposed basically. So there's lots of people like no, not talking about this. They don't want to talk about it. It's not for their benefit to, talk, to remember it. Because if they remember it, a lot of uh, like a lot of the munafiqin will be exposed, and they don't want that. They want to hide it. They want to attack it. They want to. They don't want no one to remember Imam Hussein and the massacre of Karbala. But like I said, I know Sunnis that cook for Imam Hussein. They go to walk into Imam Hussein. They love Imam Hussein more than Shias. I know Sunnis like that. And just because someone called himself Shia, it doesn't mean he's a good person. Because Imam Al Sadiq said. A lot of there will be a lot of Shias who will try and kill Imam Al Mahdi and fight against Imam Al Mahdi, and a lot of so called Shias will try and fight against Imam Al Mahdi when he comes, when he returns. And there's a lot of people, so called Shias, they will, they will go to the pagan side, and a lot of the pagans, like a lot of the story, a lot of the Shias will go and to the like the, the killers of Imam Hussein's side, and a lot of the Sunnis will go to Imam Hussein's side in the end of times, like these times we're living in. So a lot of the Sunnis you see today, they will be supporters of Imam Hussein, and there will be, a, there will be a few numbers of Shias who claim to be Shia, like you see today some of them, they will be on that opposition side, killing with the killers of Imam Hussein, you understand? So it doesn't mean Shia or Sunni, you're Muslim, innit? That's the most important thing. And um, like I said, a lot of Sunnis in Iraq and other countries, they love Imam Hussein, even in this country. But it's not like, it's just been, I think it's a community thing. They're not active with it because of, you know, it's maybe it's traditions or something. I, can't, I don't know exactly why, but it could be like traditions, like forgotten traditions, forgotten Sunnah or something like that. Yeah. So like I said, just because you're calling yourself Shia or Sunni, it doesn't mean you're right. You understand? You're Muslim and we'll see in the end of times who's right. You understand? We can't, we can't say now who's, because if Imam Hussein came now, how do I know these people wouldn't try and kill Imam Hussein, for example? And how do I know the Sunnis wouldn't back him? We, we don't know this. But what we could say is right where we're living, and inshallah, if we was there, we would want to be with his army, you understand? With the Prophet Muhammad's army, you understand? Because when Imam Mahdi returns, he's going to have the banner of the, Prophet, of the Prophet Muhammad, which he used in the Battle of Badr. And this banner is from Jibrail from the sky. And he'll have the sword of the Prophet Muhammad, and he'll have, he'll have the shield, and he'll have the horse of the Prophet Muhammad. Uh, he will come on a horse. I don't know if it's the Prophet's horse, but he will come on a horse, Imam Al Mahdi. And these end of times are all happening, like all the signs. So when Imam Mahdi returns, he will re he will take re uh, revenge for the blood of Imam Hussein. That's why he's coming to take revenge on the killers of Imam Hussein. Now you're gonna say the killers of Imam Hussein are dead, but though uh, history repeats itself, there's people that are happy with what Yazid did, what the killers of Imam Hussein did in their heart. So these people we will be in the army of the killers, so they'll be counted as the, with them, do you understand? Whoever you love, you're with them, do you understand? So it's gonna be peak times when Imam Mahdi comes, he's gonna be doing massacre. So, like I said, bro, a lot of these so-called Shias are gonna fight against Imam Mahdi. Imam Sadiq says from the, the back of Kufa and Najaf, 70,000 of them will take out their sword to fight Imam Mahdi. Imam Mahdi will chop all of them up because uh, this, so it doesn't matter you saying I'm Shia, I'm Sunni, it's all, it's, all, it's all fake, bro. You're Muslim and you love the Prophet Muhammad. And if you love the Prophet Muhammad, at the same time, you've ordered by Allah to love his family and take the Sunnah, a lot of the Sunnah from them. Do you understand? Because there's family, they know what's going on. Do you understand? So uh, all of this Shia Sunni thing is, is wrong. Do you understand? And I know, and I'm telling you, bro, if you're real, you're real. If you're fake, you're fake. You can be born in a Hindu family. You understand? And then you can be born in a Muslim family. You're just following your parents. You understand? We, or you're born in Shia family, you're just following your parents. You understand? It's, it's all, it's not, you have to have a bigger open mind. You understand? You understand? Allah knows what's in the house. Allah knows who's real. We don't know. We can't, I can't really tell you who's real. Allah knows who's real. Whether they're Sunni, Shia, even no, a lot of non-Muslims, a lot of people that are non-Muslim, they're going to join Imam Mahdi's army. They're going to become with, 
You understand? And a, a lot of people that's meant to be Muslim are going to go with their Dajjal's the army. They're going to go with the, the opposition, the Dajjal, you know what I'm saying? So it's, we're going to be switching sides. You understand? Let's go. No, no one is 100%, huh? <laughs> Okay, so Mo, um, in the first interview, when I interviewed you, a lot of people in the, um, in the comment section were saying, bro, you're disrespecting somebody with mental health issues. Um, you're, you're laughing at someone that's got mental health issues, that's not all there. Now, Mo, this question, I apologize because it's very no. disrespectful for me to ask you, but I'm saying, Mo. Let me ask you the question. The person, look, one of the ways to attack someone, yeah? A sly way is to call themselves mental, innit? That's one of the ways, the tactics the pag like that pagans use, innit? Yeah? So, obviously, these people asking that, that's ops, innit? They're op automatically ops, but coming in on a sly thing. Oh, you're asking somebody trying to come on a... Fam, if this person come say that to my face, bro, I'll, I swear to God, fam, I'll cast them so hard. Because that's a violation, innit? That's like cussing, I'll yeah, cast them and I'll... Because... I'll, I'll, sorry yeah. to interrupt you, because me personally, guys, yeah? Wallahi, I've been with you bro, now... Full Whoever's asking that camera. question, whoever's asking that question is a dust to you. Let me tell you why, because they're sly. You know what sly people do? They're not, you know, look, well, let me tell you one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the believer before he created this creation, where before he created, he said to, in the, uh, the life of the souls, he said to him, jump in the fire, the believer. So the believer comes out, he jumped in the fire. He listened to what Allah said. He told the kafir, the pagan, jump in the fire. The, the pagan said, no. Yeah, he was a cold. That's why... It, the, the hadith says, Ma min mu'min illa wa lahu hidda. There is not a believer except he has a, ang a bit of anger in him. A bit of, uh, 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 do you understand? Fire. Do you understand? Hidda. Yeah? It gets angry. So these people, they're one of them people that Allah said to them, jump in the fire. I said, no, they're cold. They're sly. They use sly tactics. Oh, he's mental health. Do you understand? They're not real. I can speak from my heart and tell you you're, you're a dusty, you're a munafiq, you're a fit. Come and say that to my face. But you understand? Do you feel like, but do you feel like sometimes, because I've seen you off camera, I've seen you yeah. off live, yeah? And I spent a long time with you. Yeah. Three, four times I've seen you, yeah? And wallahi, I haven't seen any mental health. I haven't seen like any I've signs told of- you, Alhamdulillah. No, 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 no. But I'm saying like, do you feel like sometimes- Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, like my aql is good, yeah? Very good. But however, these people, like I said, they want to use this tactic, this sly tactic. They're not real. They're not real. But do if you feel you're like real, you speak from your heart. You know, what? lie. Only cowards lie. You understand? But do you feel like? But do you feel like maybe because sometimes you joke around on live, and like the way you behave on live, it makes. They know it's like a joke. They know it's a joke, but they're trying to make it like it's a it's a, it's a serious thing. So dust to you, fam. Guys, I want to say yeah, this is not a joke for me because I don't find it funny that you guys no, are accusing me. I told me. you they're trying to I, use I, the I, sly I, I, tactic. I know, I know, I know. But I don't want you guys to accuse me. Hello, Who's he's... accusing you? No, 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 of disrespecting somebody who's got mental health. Wallahi, listen to me. Wait, 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 Saying something like All that. I'm saying is, yeah, Alhamdulillah, I've alhamdulillah, seen more. Alhamdulillah, bruv, man's normal, bruv. Saying. I've got more aql than you, bro. Let's have an IQ test, see who's smarter. Dust the youths, fam. You see, sitting backbiting, fam. You backbiting a believer. On the day of judgment, I'm not forgiving you for that. Yeah? And, and, and he will take all your good deeds and you're going to take all yeah. your sins. Makes alhamdulillah, bro. I don't understand how you guys who've never met him off camera, off live, how, how you guys can assume someone has mental health or is not all day. You guys haven't spent time with him. Anyways, man. Here's what it is. I'm just happy he cleared it up. Hasbi Allah wa na'mal wakil on all my ops. Hasbi Allah wa na'mal wakil on everyone that's violating. Allah is gonna take revenge on them. Okay, Mo. Mashallah, you've been around for many, many years now, yeah? At your age now, when you look back at your life, yeah, honestly, do you have any regrets? Do you wish that you done more for yourself, do you wish that you put in more for yourself so you could have been somewhere else now? Or are you, alhamdulillah, content and happy? Like, I say alhamdulillah, yeah, because like, alhamdulillah, because I feel like um, Allah gave me everything. However, if there's things I could uh, go back in in life, obviously um, in life I would have made like a hundred children. Because I would have, since the age of 14 or 15, I would have breeded like four girls a year, five girls a year. Um, I would have had life. I would have made a lot of children. That's the only thing I'll regret. And then a hundred children, I'll have a hundred grandchildren, then you know what I'm saying? I'll have a big family. But how, how would you have looked after 
and funded all these wives and all these children. With uh, with marriage, Allah brings you uh, man. Uh, like, oh, look, bring halal marriage. Yeah, you're completely. Uh, you're protecting half your deen. You're opening doors. You're taking away the evil. So you're doing good things to society. You're bringing in halal children in this world. Children born from marriage. Children that's gonna re re remember Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. You understand? Children that are gonna keep you company. That are gonna look after you when you're older. They're gonna pray for you when you're gone. You understand? They're gonna do good charity so, works. Yeah. So you, Modine, are saying, all these years in life, the only regret you have is you didn't have a hundred kids, and you didn't. Yeah, that's that's one of them. Like number one. I would have done shit from four, age of 14, started. Yeah. Because your boss is coming quickly. Yeah. But you don't have any regrets like you could have worked harder, saved money, done something, invested, yeah. All these business. People saving, saving, saving. Yeah, you could save a bit of money, yeah, in your life. But the people that save a lot, they're going to be punished. Like they say, if you don't give to zakat, charity, and all that, snakes come in your grave and start biting you. That's the thing that stopped me from saving too much. Like that's why I started, I said, well, forget, forget chasing money because. I used to have, I used to, when I was like 17, I used to stack money and then I used to think, then I read these hadiths about if you don't give it for the sake of Allah, snakes are going to bite you. I said, why am I still chasing money when I'm going to get bitten by snakes in the grave? Well, I'm not chasing that no more. So I was like, you know, let me chill for a bit because I'm chasing something that's going to punish me. So that's what got me mad. I was like, I'm not chasing money no more. I'm not chasing it like that. Cool. So, Modine, simple question. Uh, what is your relationship with? Uh, I think she's uh, her name's Chelsea. Can you explain like what's good? Because I've seen videos with you at her house when she's going live, topless. I've seen yeah, you going to the topless. beach of yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. You were topless dancing. Oh, I'm top. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, Basically, yeah. it was hot day, but I covered some of my body, like yeah, half. Yeah. I was half like. Like I was covering half my body, so it's alhamdulillah. I wasn't that much topless. But you guys went to the beach and all that, so like, yeah. so what are you? Oh yeah, she took you to like nice restaurants and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So are you two just um, friends, or is there something something there that you don't want to expose to the audience? Uh, I just wanted to say Chelsea is a English lady who's, uh, as you know, English people. They're very kind. Yeah. They're very generous people. Yeah. Uh, so she's got that in her blood, in her genes. So she's very generous. And she's very kind. Is there anything else in her jeans that you know she has? <laughs> in her jeans, no. I'm, I'm not talking about I'm jeans. Joking, like joking. I'm talking about know, joking, bloodline, joking. yeah. So she's uh, obviously a very, very kind person, and uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala loves the generous person. Yeah. So, uh, so she's obviously uh, God. I pray for her, innit? and um, she's just a good friend, isn't it? And uh, I pray she gets blessed. But there's nothing more there. There's like because from someone like me, when I watch it, it looks like you two are a bit more. A bit more than just friends you two look like maybe maybe one day you never know get married or relationship or in my whole life yeah i never had a girl as a friend my whole life yeah because i can't have a girl as a friend because i'll end up uh, trying to move to the minute okay so what is she then so she, but with chelsea no just she's the only one that's a friend the rest of the girls they're not friends. any girl tries to be yeah, my friend yeah, i'm moving so so away. explain explain so like there's no friends with me. all these years of your life you can't be my friend i'll try and do yeah, the, but, okay, i'll try so and marry that's you, my point that's my point so all these years in life that you've lived yeah. you've never had a female I, friend my whole life man. okay so and why? i never will all okay. the girls that i try and be my friend is a lie it's all lies you none of you are my friends all I, my intention is to marry you in a halal way and okay, do but, my but, thing but why chelsea why is chelsea your friend why is chelsea never like something a girl that you want to marry 
So right. out of all these girls you want to marry and don't want to be friends, but why is Chelsea the only girl you want to be friends with but not get married to? Because, because Chelsea is just maybe from God. He's trying to say that's the only friend you're going to have in your whole life. Uh, yeah. That's the only one. There will never be one after her or before her. So she's like got that privilege to do, be the only girl friend as a friend in my whole life ever to exist. Okay. So that's maybe Allah wanted to choose her as a, just a friend, not as a wife. Yeah. Okay, cool. Guys, that is the Modine interview part two. Thank you so much for every single one of you who's watched. Thank you so much to every single one of you who's liked, comment, subscribed. And any of you who hasn't, please, please, please do like, comment and subscribe and share because it means so much. Um, I put a lot of time and effort into uh, these videos. Mo puts a lot of time and effort into these videos. The cameraman, the person who edits the videos. It takes a lot of work as a team to put these videos together. So um, the first interview with Modin done really well, Alhamdulillah. The second video with Ali Da'wa done really well. And inshallah, this one does well. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you guys want to see more of me and Modin, let me down, let me know in the comments. If you guys want to see me more with Ali Da'wa or anybody else, let me know in the comments. But yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. It means a lot to me. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and see you in the next video, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.